afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. When it comes to well-known historical Vermonters, Ethan Allen tops the list. When Allen, his brothers, and their beloved Green Mountain Boys were making their mark, Vermont wasn't even Vermont. It was the frontier, and Allen was its most well-known figure. But who was this man among boys, so to speak? Thanks to the dedicated volunteers and scholars, we have a window into this world at the Ethan Allen Homestead located in Burlington. We would like to welcome Angie Grove. She is the executive director of the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Fran. It's a pleasure to be here. So before we learn about somebody from the past, I want to ask about uh, you, this present day Vermonter. Uh, you've been named the executive director of the Ethan Allen Homestead in 2022. How did you first learn about Allen and Vermont? Uh, well, I'm originally from Washington State, and I knew while growing up that I wanted to be a Revolutionary War historian. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I graduated high school, I moved to the East Coast. And I loved revolutionary colonial history, which is why I came out here and worked in Boston on the Freedom Trail. I worked at a few other museums, but I did my graduate studies at UVM in the history department. And my focus there was on revolutionary Vermont and this frontier landscape and how Vermont came to be a state and how it tried to be the 14th colony and <laughs> then paved its own unique path instead. I love the way you followed this passion and, and um, of course, as a graduate student at UVM. So even though there's a statue of General Ethan Allen at the Vermont State House and several drawings of the exploits of the Green Mountain Boys, Allen never sat for a portrait. <laughs> Who was this mystery man and his connection to Burlington? That's true. Well, we don't have any picture of him from his time period. Um, he did leave us a bunch of his words. He was a very prolific writer. Many of those writings were published in newspapers. Newspapers really were the social media mm. outlet of the 18th century. Um, and most of those writings was to defend the New England homesteaders in what is now Vermont against the aristocratic land claims from New York. Um, however, he was more than just a man of words. He was a man of action. He led the Green Mountain Boys to protect those homesteaders against the aristocrats in New York. He was a Revolutionary War military leader who took Fort Ticonderoga. Um, he was a defender of religious freedom and an intellectual philosopher. Um, he wrote Reason, the Only Oracle of Man, which was a philosophy tract for deism, which was a mm. minority religion of the time. Um, and he became famous throughout revolutionary America in the 18th century um, because of all those actions. But particularly to Burlington, he was very important um, in the land speculation companies, the Onion River Land Company that him and his brothers founded that started the city of Burlington um, himself. Uh, and then he retired to Burlington. He right. lived here for the last two years of his life and right here at the Ethan Allen Homestead and um, this is where he, he passed away unexpectedly. Um, and his immediate family continued his legacy in Burlington. His wife was the first botanist um, in Vermont. His eldest um, surviving daughter, Fanny Allen Jr., became the first Catholic nun and fought for religious freedom for Catholics um, and worked at a hospital as a nun. And that's why we have a hospital named after her today. Wow. Um, and some legacies that aren't so great from his immediate family. Um, his other daughter, daughter, Lucy Hitchcock, was a famous slaveholder here in Burley, mm. in the city of Burlington, uh, long after slavery was outlawed. So the, the family really made their mark here. And, and when people come to the uh, Homestead and Museum, what, what, what can people see? What can they visit when they come to visit there? So the Ethan Allen Homestead is a public park and it's owned and operated by the Winooski Valley Park District, which is one of our founding partners here at the museum. It's approximately 300 acres. There's hiking trails, biking trails, community gardens, and an outdoor-based early education center. Um, but within the museum itself, in the 1930s barn. We have exhibits on everyday life in the 18th century, history about the Green Mountain Boys, um, which turned into the Vermont National Guard. We have a short film about Ethan Allen. We have a kid's area with costume corners and go games and toys from the colonial area. And then out in the beautiful groundscape, there's uh, Fanny's Garden um, and the Allen House itself, which was built in 1785, we believe. 
And we've also been partnering with the local Abenaki nonprofit, Al Nobaiwi, and they have a, um, a beautiful Native American village, traditional gardens, and uh, an Abenaki exhibit in our museum as well. All right, it's quite, it's wonderful and quite comprehensive. I love the trails. Um, so, so the Green Mountain Boys were, were made up of volunteers willing to serve for a cause, and this is certainly the spirit of volunteerism that you have uh, among your staff at the museum. Talk about the people who make history come alive at the homestead. Absolutely, we have an amazing staff of dedicated volunteers. Uh, the museum is primarily run through volunteers. I'm the only full-time staff person, and there is a part-time seasonal museum manager as well, but our volunteers put in over 500 hours each month to run the museum during the operating season. Um, and going back all the way to uh, 2007, around the time of the Great Recession, the museum almost closed due to financial challenges, mm -hmm. but the volunteers reorganized and kept the museum alive until for over two years until the museum was able to like refound a new organization. Um, our volunteers do all sorts of things. They garden, give us legal consultation, do historical research, serve on our board of directors, um, do artifact storage, help with special events, school field trips, as well as give tours four times a day to <laughs> guests from all over the world yeah. uh, every day for six months of the year. Um, but our volunteers stay busy in the winter too um, with other activities as well. It's, fan it's fantastic. So you, you mentioned Alan's wife, Fanny, um, at the homestead. How is she remembered there today? So Fanny Allen is one of the favorites of a lot of our staff, and we're really excited that this summer we got to start a documentary film project about Fanny Allen. So we're creating a short uh, film about a Fanny Allen that will host here at the museum and show to our guests on a regular basis. But um, Fanny was first, Vermont's first known botanist, native botanist. And she has a collection of dried flowers and herbs mm -hmm. from uh, both ver native Vermont, as well as things brought over from Europe. And that's held at the UVM Pringle Herbarium. Mm -hmm. And so we were really lucky to have the uh, Pringle Herbarium come over and bring the collection to be part of the documentary film as well. But prior to Fanny um, doing this botany, she had a very dramatic life before she came here where she was engaged at the age of 15 and her fiance drowned in the Hudson River. And then she was forced into a marriage with a British officer at the age of 16. And he died a year later in the Revolutionary War, but not after she gotten pregnant and then had a child. And we don't know exactly what happened to the child, but we know four years later when she moved to Vermont, that child had passed away. So wow. by the time she was 17, 18 years old, she'd lost a fiance, lost a husband, and then lost a child. And that's the same time her stepfather finally got released from prison, came home and committed suicide. So her and her aunt who had adopted her moved to Vermont to start over. It, Vermont was their clean slate, and um, that's when she met Ethan Allen, and despite a major age difference, she married him, and... Um, what, what, what a life yeah. so young. I, I, I want to make sure that we get to a couple of other uh, attractions and yeah. what you're doing. The, so the, the main attraction, of course, is, is the house. Let's, let's uh, take a peek inside quickly. Sure. So the house is pretty rustic by today's standards, but it's pretty glamorous by 18th century frontier standards. And inside there's exhibits on domestic life, including the kitchen, bedroom, how to turn flax into linen, as well as on the restoration of the house that happened in the 1980s to turn it into a museum. The house is filled with um, almost exclusively reproductions and some antiques, which uh, really allows the visitors to get hands on and actually touch all the items and try to grind some, you know, flour in the mortar and pestle mm -hmm. or tighten the bed um, ropes or try on the wooden shoes, things like that. <laughs> so, so the house, you know, had many um, occupants after Alan died um, and it was rediscovered and restored. Yeah. Can you quickly mention how this happened? 
Yeah, so a local historian named Ralph Nadine Hill uh, was specifically looking for Ethan Allen's house. And uh, it had long been known this was his farmland. And so he came looking and found an old uh, foundation of the house. And he spoke with the residents and oral history had passed down that it, that was Ethan Allen's house. So he got some help doing corroborative evidence, both with documents and with the physical um, house itself. And uh, re um, restored it to his interpretation of what it is. There have been some uh, questions by other preservationists about the way that it was restored and some theories about how it might have looked different. And we're currently working with the State Preservation Office to try to solve those mysteries and tell, um, you know, what we can know now because we have more tests we can do now than in the 1980s. I love the histories, that, uh, the, the mysteries that are solved with history. Yeah. Um, so so you, um, you talked about um, the uh, Abenaki and Native peoples. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, of course, um, Ethan Allen was not the first settlement in the area. Um, it was uh, Native people. Talk about how you're working with Native groups and tribes. Absolutely. So um, a lot of archaeological digs were done on the homestead between the 1970s and the 1990s, and a lot of Native American artifacts um, were found. And near the homestead uh, actually is the site of the earliest known farming in Vermont by Native Americans. Um, so Natives have been using that land for thousands of years, and the Ethan Allen Homestead Museum is a benefactor of the land displacement of the Native peoples that Ethan Allen um, and all the British um, colonists coming in were a part of. So we like to uh, partner with the local Abenaki nonprofit called Alno Baiwi. And uh, we actually recently worked together to get some grant money to extend the Vermont Indigenous Heritage Center exhibit. And it's breaking ground next month. And we're hoping that by next spring, it'll be open to the public. And this will be a separate independent museum specifically dedicated to Vermont Indigenous Heritage. So you're sharing the space of the homestead um, with the Ab Ab Abenaki. Absolutely. So um, uh, hours of operation and how can people find more um, about planning a visit to the homestead? Absolutely. So we're open um, May 1st through October 31st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. We do four tours a day. Um, and so you could go to our website, ethanallenhomestead.org, to find out more information about the tours, when the video shows, what special events are going on, um, things like that. And coming up October 15th is our last special event of the season. It's our harvest festival called Flax Extravaganza. And we'll have reenactors on site doing the entire process of turning flax into linen, just like they would do 200 years ago. How fun. Angie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard, stay well. Mm -hmm.